It's such a treat for me to introduce our last speaker of the day, CEO and Executive Director of the Media Rating Council, George Ivey. He uh, seems to become now the policeman of our industry. We all turn to him to solve all these issues. So he's going to update us on their progress towards a new cross-platform audience currency. Thank you, Jamie. Got it. So I was joking with Jane that maybe, given what I'm talking about, you, you guys should have went and got drinks and then come back. Um, no, it's, it's really great to be here. And it's amazing the progress that we're seeing in this area. Um, before I get into my thing, MRC validation and stuff has been mentioned several times here. So I just want to do a couple of quick hits in order. Artie said something which caught my attention. He said, well, you know, you have this two-second standard, and some of us are pushing that forward in terms of viewability and doing other things and differentiating ourselves. And here's my advice to you. We've spent thousands of hours studying this stuff. Adopt the standard. <laughs> you can do what you want to buy and sell and monetize that. And you can report over and above if you want three seconds, if you want all the way through the ad, if you want whatever you want. But at least have the standard on the page for comparative purposes across people. Please adopt the standard. A little commercial. Second, Janice asked a question about validation of data sources. I'm about to tell you about a cross-media standard. And in that cross-media standard, we're writing standards for data enrichment. So there will be industry standards around that as part of the project. And interestingly enough, we already have vendors coming to us to ask whether we'll audit them as a data provider. Think about that. That's an entirely new type of MRC auditing that could potentially be done. Third, uh, Bruce asked a great question about how do we know like all these different creative types are going to do all this cross media, different devices, do all these things have the same value and the time difference and all that? Great question. In the standard, we're segregating, we're going to mandate segregation of creative types within devices. Where that gets really hard is that you also then have to attribute data to that. And the intersection of attributing data in those silos that you may build makes that process extremely difficult. So we have to be careful. We want to do what Bruce raised, rightfully so, but then we got to be able to cash that check in attributing data to those impressions if we want audience currency. And what we've seen so far is that gets really, really hard to do that properly. And then last, Kelly and Manish were up on stage, and I just wanted to congratulate them on progress that both companies have made. I don't know if either is still in the audience. Um, it's tremendous to see them moving forward the way they are, Comscore, RentTrack, and uh, Nielsen. If you... If you're like me today, you've seen like dozens of different possible solutions presented to you, all different things. We're using digital, we're using tablets, we're using X, Y, and Z, we're combining all this data. How do you know what's right or wrong? If you use research data and you're at a media company, you're at an advertiser, you're at an agency, and you're not in the MRC, because we're auditing these processes. I don't know how you make your decisions. So, little commercial. You should be in the audit process in the middle of it to figure out whether this stuff actually works or not. So Jane asked me to kind of sum things up about desired future state. The first thing I want to do is talk about, believe it or not, not about desired future state, but about some industry associations. You have several associations out there that are breaking their back in today's environment to try to make things fit together and work. And a lot of people get confused about what they are and what their mission is. And I want to talk just a second about that. I know it's off topic, but people are confused. They ask me all the time, what's the difference between MRC and SIM or ARF and SIM? They're different. 
And this is in George's words, by the way. This is not magic. This is just my view and how I sort of organize the world. You have the ARF, which is a very, very important association. They sit at the very top of all this. And their primary purpose is to tell the world that advertising matters. Uh, you know, determine and promote the value of advertising, establish models that are fit for making decisions with advertising, highlighting innovative practices, curating content, and distributing knowledge about that. If you didn't know, they recently completed a study which talks about the value of advertising, which you need to look at. If you haven't seen it, you really need to look at it. Then you have SIM. And I think of SIM as kind of like the industry's R&D arm. Basically, this great association has been formed to go out and study how measurement practice and the tools necessary to enable me measurement practice will evolve. And so there's a big fancy thing I wrote up there, guiding the industry's research and development efforts in cross-platform media measurement and enabling technologies to bring greater efficiencies in meeting the needs of leading content providers, media agencies, and advertisers. So SIM is really important in terms of development of future practice. Then you have MRC. We're sitting really in the production environment and the near production environment. We have hundreds of product, over 100 products that have come to us for auditing and accreditation. We audit these things. At the end of the day, we decide whether it's accredited or not, and the marketplace interprets that as, does it work? They don't interpret it, is it fully disclosed? We do make sure everything's fully disclosed, but we also try to make sure that things work. The accreditation process is difficult. Sometimes it takes years. We just accredited media metrics, and I think Josh Chasen was a boy when we started that audit. <laughs> <coughs> but I think Comscore would tell you that tremendous amounts of progress and innovation were made during that audit. So audits matter. There are a couple of other organizations I think you should be paying attention about. One is called TAG, the Trustworthy Accountability Group. They've been formed by the IEB, the ANA, and the 4As, and they're really trying to handle this piracy fraud issue from a macro controlling level. Now we write the standards for how to filter for invalid traffic and fraud, but they're creating the tools to implement this stuff and share information across the wider ecosystem. It's a pretty important little organization. And there's also something called the IEB Tech Lab. So I don't know if very many of you have heard of VAST, VPAID, MRAID, the digital operability standards. How do you actually serve a video? How do you serve and control rich media? The tech lab is working on writing and modernizing that stuff. Pretty important to understand that too. So this is just a brief view of the world. And if you were ever wondering why we all exist, we all have purposes. And I think all of us are working really hard on this issue. I don't know what just happened. So the first thing I'm just gonna remind everybody about is the advertising process. The reason why is because it's important to understand how we're attacking this issue of standardizing things. Just in a very, very general terms, you send an ad to somebody, it gets delivered. There's an opportunity to see that ad established. The ad is then seen and engaged with by the person. The person is affected by the ad. And by the way, that's when something called branding happens which is pretty important. And then last, the person acts or does not act on the, the ad. And they were talking about, the, the last panel was just talking about that. The click is a good determining factor of whether you were moved. It might be, but it's not always a good determining factor of whether the person was affected by the ad. So that's a pretty important thing too. But this is kind of like a very old model that arose in like the 20s and 30s called AIDA. AIDA stands for Attention, Interest, Desire, Then Action. If you split this up, the first three stages are the opportunity to see, basically building to that. That is something we are working to standardize. Create measurement of the opportunity to see on an apples-to-apples -apples basis across all media types. 
That's our goal. The bottom three is about the value of advertising. Did somebody get affected by the advertising? Was it effective? Was it lousy creative? Nobody liked it. They didn't even like the product. So there's those last three and the first three are sort of different animals in our standardization process. With that in mind, this is our roadmap. Prior to June 2004, in digital, for example, we traded on something called the served impression, which was served to any place on the web page, for example. Somebody didn't even necessarily have the opportunity to see that ad, and it was monetized. Very inefficient. When we started studying that, uh, at times, more than 50% of the ads served in an environment were non-viewable, had no value, essentially. You see that little line that says MRC guidelines efforts? I'm responsible for served impressions. MRC wrote that back in 2004. We standardized how to measure a served impression. The thing that I'm damning today, I created in 2004 because the tech was the only thing that we could do at the time was a served impression. And we wrote a whole bunch of standards about that, how to measure a video, how to measure a click, how to measure rich media, how to measure audience based on served information. Well, maybe about 2010, this guy walked into our office, a Russian guy, and he said, I've been everywhere trying to tell people about this new tech that I invented. It's called a viewable impression. I've been thrown out. For example, that guy was at the IAB, and the IAB said, we're not interested. But just for equal time, he was also at the four A's. And the four A's said, we're not interested. He showed David and I the tech. In about a millisecond, we said, that's going to change the world. We need that. So then we started working on auditing that company. It was called RealView. And they developed the method for determining a viewable impression, at least as far as we know, the first we ever saw. We were able to accredit RealView, and we began working on a viewable impression standard. This thing called 3MS formed. They came to MRC. Everything came together. That's the current state, believe it or not. We've been working for many years, doing a conversion to served impressions pretty hard. But we're making a lot of progress. There's increasing use of viewable impressions. We think about 30% of digital impressions now have viewability somewhere buried in their terms or either as a type of a guarantee. And we're making progress there. For example, a lot of big walled garden organizations are now allowing third-party tagging of viewable measurement. So that is going to turn in a big way in the next few months. We also issued a big standard for getting non-human traffic out of the ecosystem, an invalid traffic standard, last year. It's a really big standard. It's important. If you haven't seen it, you should look at it. It's one of MRC's best pieces of work, I think, ever. Where we're going is a digital and cross-media currency standard, currency that's viewable to a human with duration with targeted audience characteristics. Notice I didn't say just age and gender, although I think it's pretty important, age and gender, but we want to have targeting characteristics that are based on any number of things. Uh, and we're looking to standardize that. And the last step is that bottom three segments of that advertising model, the value of advertising. We have projects on the docket that we really haven't fully started yet about the value of advertising. How do you engage with a commercial? Viewability is not about whether the ad was effective. It was about whether there was an opportunity to see it. So we still have to write the standards around whether the ad was effective. So those are projects to come. We're not going to do this sequentially, though. We learned our lesson with viewability. We caught spears for about four years. And we want to make progress. So basically, what we're going to do is do some of these multi-stages at the same time. We just wrote social media measurement guidance and issued that as a first part of starting down this value of advertising process. The, I should also say the IAB wrote an excellent white paper on engagement metrics, which I think is still on their website. If you haven't seen that, you should look at it. It narrows the field from thousands to a few measurements that look pretty reasonable. And that's what we're going to use as a foundation for our standardization. 
What does all this mean? Where we're going with our cross-media measurement standard is, as I said, impressions that are viewable to a human, incorporating duration by audience characteristics, segregating ads and content. For content, the easy one, we're thinking along the lines of an average minute audience calculation and perpetuating reach and frequency on that basis. For ads, we're talking about gross and unduplicated impressions as stated above the view, the human and viewable, et cetera. For video ads, incorporation, incorporating duration weighting into that. A little like, I believe, the lady from ABC showed us today. I have to study that. I took, I took a picture, if you're still out there, I took a picture of your chart. Um, we're going to build clear advertising effectiveness and value metrics post OTS. If you use an ad effectiveness vendor, go tell them to be audited. That science needs validation. I don't need to tell you, this is a difficult road. If you think it's hard in digital, where we got to make everything viewable and we have to do non-human traffic and we have to figure out how to do duration and we have to do audience attribution, it's much harder in other media where we don't even have necessarily commercial ratings, certainly not validated discrete commercial ratings at this point. We have to make, we, we trade on average quarter hour in certain instances. In certain instances, we don't even have electronic media or electronic measurement. We're, we need to figure out how to bring all these things into a common currency framework. So the legacy media is actually going to be quite disruptive in this kind of a change, getting to what I said before, apples to apples metrics. Accounting for duplication, I think, has been discussed today. We're going to be standardizing that and data attribution. I don't have a magic bullet. I hope we're done. We, we intend to try to be done with the cross-media standard by the end of 2016, but I don't have a crystal ball either, so I don't know how long that'll take. We're already working on our third draft, so you know, I don't know if there are going to be 10 drafts or five drafts. I can't tell you. It is contentious. That's what I have to say. Participate, please, please participate. I'm not just talking about MRC, I'm talking about SIM, I'm talking about ARF, understand what TAG does. But if you're using and hearing about all these different products and you're confused, come to MRC, be involved in an audit. You'll figure out whether the product works or not. That's all I have to say, Jane. Thank you for having me.